Um, today, we're going to go through the procedure for IV drug administration via peripheral line and central line. Um, so first and foremost, I have washed my hands and I have dried them thoroughly. So now I'm going to gather all my equipment. So today, we're going to need our syringe, our um, filter needles, water for injection, Cristopin, our uh, drug additive label, our solution, uh, normal saline, uh, giving set, our sunny cloths. These are our sunny cloths, CH 2%. Um, I'm just going to show you a bung that you can put at the end of the needle if you are not, um, you at the end of your syringe if you're not using a needle, and the drug additive label. And the first thing we need to do is um, open up all our equipment. So this is our syringe. So you ensure you don't contaminate the end of your syringe. You open your water for injection. You take the seal off your antibiotic. And you open your blunt fill needle without contaminating the end. And um, you just ensure that you make sure the paper comes off. Uh, you open your sunny cloth and that is all ready to go. You also take off the paper off your fluids that you want to insert through and you leave that down on the table. And you open your giving set and you can leave that in the packet until you're ready for use. So now I uh, have to clean my tray, I'll wipe, because we don't really know where the tray has been beforehand, so it's important to have it clean. And you discard your wipe. I then decontaminate my hands with alcohol hand gel. to ensure that they are clean. And then I apply my non-steroid gloves. And it's important to wear gloves when you're reconstituting drugs. As uh, first and foremost, you're more open to splashes. And also, you want to prevent um, uh, antibiotic insensitivity to the drugs that you're drawing up. And it's important to wear the right size gloves also because if they're too big, you're not going to get the same hold on your syringe and needle. So it's important that they're the correct size. Now, I get my syringe and my needle and without contaminating either end, I attach my needle to the syringe and I draw up the water for injection. And it's important that you check all the dates for your water and your antibiotics. So this is 12, 2016. I expelled any air that's in the syringe and I can just recap that. Wipe my vial which is important to wipe and to let it dry. And you can check it's Cristopin and it expires 2014. Now, if you're unsure of drawing up your drug or what to reconstitute with, we have our IV drug administration guide, which is our Bible here in the hospital. And it tells you exactly how much you give to the patient the dose and what you reconstitute that dose with and how you administer it, whether it's an IV push or an IV infusion. So now I add my water to the vial. And it's important when you're pushing in the water to be aware that not all of the water will go into the vial. So if you let the air back into the syringe, when you re remove your needle and syringe, there's no splash. So you just expel any air from your syringe and you can discard that needle. So I put it into my sharp spin and I can attach my new needle and syringe.
a wrench. So I just make sure that the powder is well reconstituted. There's no point trying to draw up something where the powder is not fully dissolved. And also in the IV Drug Administration Guide, it will tell you whether you should roll between the palms of your hands or whether you should just shake vigorously in order to reconstitute. And whatever it says, that's the way to carry it out. Um, we will make sure that it's all well reconstituted. It can take a few seconds in which to do this. So now we're there. So what we do is we, we swab and we insert our syringe and needle and, in and try and bring the needle, tilt the antibiotic vial to the side so that all the fluid comes up to the top and keep your needle to the top and draw it up. Okay, nearly there. And you can try and twirl the bottle around so that you can get all the drug. So all up into the syringe. You have your bottle, you always hold on to your bottle. Okay, and you span tilt your syringe upwards and expel any air. So as I said today, that that is your drug added to your syringe. Now, if you were giving this as a push, you could remove your needle and put this cap on at the end because we have a needle-free system here. So this is um, your syringe and just attach that cap and that's the way it will be. But today, it's, we're going to show you how to um, uh, instill it into the infusion. So this is our infusion bag here. So we're going to open a new sunny cloth and we're going to wipe the end of our bung here on the mini bag, swab that and let it dry. And we're going to remove our bung and attach our needle and insert it in, ensuring that you don't hit off the side of the tube because it's very easy to puncture these. But seeing as this the filter needle is needle free, it prevents that from happening. So once that's inserted, you discard your needle and syringe into the appropriate sharps bin and you mix <coughs> your bag thoroughly. Now you get your giving set and you get your roller clamp and you bring down halfway, which is important because it makes for easier access. And you close it off. When you're closing your giving set, you know it's closed when the roller clamp is at the narrow end and you know it's open if it's up at the wider end. So you remove the cap from the spike, ensuring not to contaminate it. And you twist your cap off your mini bag and you insert the tube. It's important to fill the chamber with a little bit of fluid, not too much because if you fill it up to the top, you won't be able to see whether your fluid is infusing when you go to your infusion pump. You open your roller clamp and you would prime your line and it's important you prime the line because if the line isn't primed, when you go to your patient, all you want to do is if you connect it up without it being primed is let it air in. So you let it all run down to the very end. And you can see that this is why you leave it in the packet because it gathers any fluid and you ensure that all the air bubbles are removed. So you turn your mini bag over onto its back and on the clear side where there's no writing, you have to fill in your drug additive label, which is very important. And on this drug additive label, you will put the name of the patient. And this is important, the ward that the patient is on, who added the drug. And this is where it's checked by. So it's very important that you always have a second checker for all drugs, no matter what drug you're giving and you get the person to check the drug. So you, that's why you always hold on to your water for injection, your antibiotic file, and you put your, the name of the drug 
which is important, and the amount. So this amount is 600, and the time it was added, and the batch number. Here we hold on to the vials in the tray until the drug is infused, just in case the patient has a reaction. And then you get your second nurse there to sign that they have checked that. And this is why it's important that you have your IV drug guide and you also have your prescription sheet with you. Never go to draw up a drug without having your uh, drug prescription sheet. And uh, because the doses can change, so that's why it's important that we have, we double check with our drug, IV drug prescription sheet. And then we peel back the back of the additive label and we attach it on. Never put the additive label on at the front because then you don't know what fluid is reconstituted up. And your additive label goes on at the back. And you put all of that, gather all of your equipment and you draw up some saline into your syringes. In some of the wards they have the prefill normal saline syringes and you put this into your tray along with your semi-pro and with your syringes of saline and you proceed to the patient with the prescription chart and your drug and you check the identity of the patient and the dose of the drug. And just to show you we have our needle free system. So here when you're attaching up your giving set it is a uh, bone will be on the end of the cannula and you will swab this and you will let it dry for the 15 seconds and after the 15 seconds you will have your IV giving set primed through your flow valve pump and this is how you attach your giving set to your bone. And you leave it. This infusion, according to the IV drug guide, goes over 15 minutes. Once you hang your infusion up, it's important that you inform the nurse that's looking after the patient that you have hung the drug and that you've primed it through. And uh, just to inform them so that they can keep an eye on the patient and on the infusion.